morning children so in the previous class you have learned about the plant cell and animal cell already i have told you all the living bodies are made up of small units called cells so what is a cell you are learning now what is a cell cell is a basic structural and functional unit of life it is a basic structural and functional means now for example when you take a small maybe a skin part for example maybe a skin part from a human body are taking in that itself there will be so many cells many 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 cells together you will see the small skin part so like that if you take the whole body the whole body will have millions of cells so then what is cell cell is a basic it is a basic founder of founder of this so basic structural and functional unit of life life means what now if any living body we say that the body living body has got life means the body is able to carry on the life processes it is able to carry the life processes if this life process is carried on we can call it as a living body so you understand what is cell cell is a basic structural and functional unit of life it has got a definite shape it has got different functions to carry on okay so when this together when the cells join together what do the cells form they, the cells will form a group of cells will form tissues first you understand this then i will tell you this so group of cells will form tissues group of tissues will form organs and group of organs will form organ system understood so based on the cells based on the number of cells organisms are classified into two groups what are those two groups now there are some organisms where there is a single cell only one cell in one cell only it carries all the life processes i tell you what is life process already i have discussed this in the previous class so what happens this cell a single cell is able to carry out all the life processes then you call that as unicellular organism uni cellular organism means a single cell is able to carry out all the life processes what are life processes like digestion respiration circulation reproduction all these things different things what is happening in our body this is called as life processes okay and when this life process is carried on in carried on we can say that it is a living body now if you take this example what is this this is a chalk piece does it have life no why because it is not made up of cells understood it is a chemical substance it is not made up of cells and it is not going to carry out any life processes but we are called as living body why what is the reason because we have life why do we say we have life because we are carrying out what the life processes isn't it so what it happens you want water to drink food to eat all that is going to where one process called life process called digestion understood you are taking in air you are taking oxygen and you are giving out carbon dioxide not inhaling and exhaling will take place so inspiration expiration together is respiration inspiration and expiration together is called as respiration so that is one more life process no now whatever the food you are eating what is going to happen that food is going to get converted into the very minor particles which goes into the blood which goes into the blood and the blood is going to carry that throughout all the cells of our body what is that called that is called a circulation you understand so like this then the food what you eat in that there will be some undigested food materials which has to be thrown out from our body and there is the water you drink and the food what we eat there also what happens there will be so many ammonium salts urea uric acid all those things that is protein materials that also will be thrown out from our body it cannot be kept in our body it is called nitrogenous waste so that power process is called excretion excretion and then this food material has to be thrown out from our body that is called 
congestion. See, these are all the various processes, life processes, which happens only in a living body. It happens only in a living body. In a non-living thing, it will never happen. Now, for example, dust or all these life processes will not be carried on. If you take a chop, it's not going to carry on. You understand? All these life processes, like I told you, know, digestion, respiration, expiration, circulation, ingestion, all these things, like production, all these things are happening only in a living body. So these processes, like digestion, respiration, those processes are called as the life processes. Did you understand? So to carry on life processes, what is required? It will happen only in a living body. Life is required. Living body is required. Did you understand? So how this life process is carried on in the living body? For that, I told you the basic unit, the smallest basic unit which is going to carry this is called as cell. Clear? So this cell in some organisms, very lower organisms, very minute organisms, you see only cell. You don't see all other things. And this cell only will carry out all the life processes, whatever I said. Digestion, respiration, everything is done by a single cell. So then if it is work in the uh, if a living body is having a single cell and carrying out all the life processes, then you call it as unicellular organism. But we never come under unicellular. Why? Our body is very complicated. Means we have got millions of cells. And these millions of cells are helping to carry out our life processes. Then we are called as multicellular, which are many cells. We are called as multicellular. So in our case, what is happening? You see, there are different groups of cells of same type will join together, will group together to carry out one particular function. So, group of similar means the same type of cells will join together, will group together. And what they do? They perform a particular function that is called as tissues. You got my point? What is cell you understood now? Cell is a basic structural and functional unit of life. In some organisms, what happens? In some organisms, there may be a single cell to carry out all the life processes. And then those type of organisms are called as unicellular organisms. In higher organisms, Single cell will not be enough. They require many number of cells will group together. Okay. And then they carry out all the life processes. We call that as multicellular organisms. Now, so when it comes to higher organisms, what is going to happen? So many cells join together. So many cells means what? Cells of the same type. Cells of the same type will join together with Combined together, they will group together and what do they form? They perform a particular function. Okay, that is called as a tissue. Tissue, we call it as tissue. That means now, for example, so if I take skin, see, the skin will consist of all the same type of skin cells. If you take heart, uh, sorry, heart, if you take heart, what happens? You see that all the cardiac tissue, cardiac tissue means. That is different from the skin tissue. You got my point? But how that tissue is formed? Cardiac tissue is formed. So cells of the same type of cardiac cells. Cardiac cells will join together and forms cardiac tissue. Which helps in the formation of the on the organ. What is that organ? Heart. You got my point? So if you take skin, only the skin type of cells will join together. If you take heart, heart uh, cells will join together. If you take kidney, kidney cells will join together to form the tissue. Understood now? So what happens after forming the cells, group of cells of same type will form tissues. Then group of tissues of the same type. So I told you example, skin and heart. I'm just giving an example. Skin and heart. So in skin, you cannot put the heart tissue into skin. That is different. That in detail you will be learning later. You understood? So heart tissue will be different from the skin tissue. So what is tissue now? Group of cells will form tissue. Now group of tissues, group of tissues will form organ. Now which are the organs? If you take mouth is one organ, nose is an organ, your heart is an organ internal if you take, eyes are organs, hand is an organ. Understood? These are all the different organs. But how, how, how are they made of? What is found in them? Now if you take as an example hand, in hand it is different tissue. If you take heart, it is different tissue. Stomach, different tissue. You got my point? So like that, all this, now but stomach is called as organ. Heart is an organ. Your nose is an organ. When you 
discussion further. Got my point? So first is about the cell, the founder. What is the founder? The cell means basic, structural and functional unit of life. So group of cells will form tissues of same type. Will form tissues. Group of tissues of same type will form organs which performs a particular function. It will not uh, do any other function. Heart means what? Pumping of blood. So which type of tissue? Cardiac tissue. Now that cardiac tissue put together it is going to form an organ. What is that organ? Heart. What my point? That is how. So now that is called as organ. Clear? This much is clear? From cells to tissues, tissues to organs. Right? Now what happens? Group of organs together will form organ tissue. Organ system. Group of organs will form organ system. Example, I take our digestive system. Okay, because you are very familiar. Without food, you cannot live, isn't it? Whatever you live, you want food, right? Air and food is you must find. So, I take example of digestive system. Digestive system comes under organ system. Okay, now if you take the example of a digestive system, so I just revise and then I go to the class. Now, Organ 
organism or living body or a living being. Have you understood it? Eh? Going to higher organisms. But if you take like small, very minute organisms, microscopic organisms like amoeba, hydra, paramecium and all that, if you take, you know, so especially this hydra is less small, but if you take um, amoeba, paramecium and all, they are single cell. Single cell. In the cell, only single cell only digestion, respiration, circulation, excretion, all this reproduction, everything will be carried by the single cell. Then you call that as unicellular organism. The single cell is going to carry all the life forces. But in our case, in higher organisms, what is the thing? Many cells will join to form tissue. Many tissues will form organs. Many organs will form organ system. Organ, organ system. And finally, what is formed? An organism, a living body is formed. This much have you understood? Now, there is a difference between a that is a uh, plant and animal. If you take plants and animals, there is a difference. Why? In animals, they are made up of animal cell. The basic unit will be animal cell. If you take plants, the basic unit of that is plant cell. Then what is the difference between an animal cell and plant cell? Already I have explained in the previous class. So I have shown you the figure also. You would have all seen it. There is a difference between a plant cell and a Animal cell. Okay, just uh, go through that uh, video, you will get it. Okay, the previous one. So, plant cell and animal cell will take, especially plant cell has got an outermost covering, we call that as cell wall. Cell wall is present in the plant cell. When you take plant cell and animal cell, what is there? In the plant cell, you have got the outermost covering is cell wall. But in animal cell, if you take, in animal cell, if you take, the outermost covering is cell membrane. Cell membrane. Then, you don't ask me whether cell membrane is present in plant cell or not. Yes, it is present. Where, a bit after the cell wall, cell wall will be the outermost one. Just inside the cell wall, there is presence of cell membrane. Inside. Inside there will be cell membrane. You understand? But here, the outermost covering itself is cell membrane. That's the difference. What it? Then, Coming to the special one more characteristics of plant cell and animal cell. In this plant cell, you find the chloroplast. You find chloroplast. That is why it gives green color to the plants. And that carries photosynthesis. Already you learned in the previous classes. Right? So, only in plant cell you find chloroplast, whereas here it is absent. Here it is present, here it is absent. Did you understand? Then, coming to one more uh, small organelle is there. Organelle means a small body which is present inside the cytoplasm. You have learned the cytoplasm? It is a jelly like or a fluid like substance which is present in the cell, inside the cell. So it is a jelly like substance. If you open the video, the previous one, you can see that. Understood? What is that? There will be, actually, it will be a little square. The plant cell and animal cell is oval shape. Clear? So here it is, outermost covering will be cell wall, and then again in, internal inside. Inside will be cell membrane. Got it? But here in the animal cell, sorry, animal cell, what is happening? The outermost covering will be cell membrane. Clear? And inside there is a jelly like substance. Inside there is a jelly like substance and this jelly like substance is called as a cytoplasm. It is called cytoplasm. And inside the cytoplasm there are small minute structures. Okay. And those minute structures you have learnt. Which all are the minute structures? 
So you have learned about the different things like mitochondria, ribosomes, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi complex, centrosome, lysosome, chloroplast, all these things. All that comes under inside the cytoplasm and there is one prominent structure which you call it as the control room of the cell. Which is the control room of the cell? That is what you call it as nucleus. Okay, that is called as the nucleus. Okay, and inside what all will be there? I told you, chloroplast. All these small, small structures will be there. In any, sorry, plant cell, if you take, there is presence of chloroplast. But here there is presence of lysosome. There is one more. That is not here. Lysosome is not here. In, any, in plant cell, you don't find. You shall find it in the animal cell. Lysosome. Here it is absent. Okay, here chloroplast is present, here lysosome is present. But where are all these structures? They are all present where? In this fluid like or jelly like substance. So, what are the different organelles which you see in that? Already I told you, which are mitochondria. We call it as powerhouse of the cell, which helps in generating energy. Mitochondria is called as powerhouse of the cell. Then you know about ribosomes. Ribosomes help in protein synthesis. Our food is consisting of what? We are eating food every day. Dosa, chapati, rice, all these things we take now. What does it consist of? It is consisting of the nutrients. What are nutrients? Like they are going to provide us the building materials. They are providing us energy. And they help in the proper shape and other structures of our body, isn't it? So, what happens here? You see there are different organelles which carry different things. Now, when you eat food, you are eating nothing but chemicals only. The food what we are eating is nothing but chemical. Why? Because it is consisting of nutrients like carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, minerals, all these things, no? So, out of that, ribosomes help in protein synthesis. Ribosomes, they are also chemical substances only, they are granular such as small small or dotted structures. I told you when I, uh, when I have taken about endoplasmic reticulum. I told you about rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Do you remember all this? Okay. So there what happens again the small granular structures. Okay. That is ribosomes. What are ribosomes work of ribosomes? Carrying out protein synthesis. Okay, then what is there? After that, there is endoplasmic reticulum. Means, which connects a thread-like structure, which connects the nucleus to that of the cell membrane. It connects the nucleus with that of the cell membrane. Why? If any material is produced in the cell, that has to be passed on to other cell also. Okay, there will be exchange. So, to provide materials inside the cell, and to provide it to the next cell, what is required? There is a connection. Red like structure. There is a connection. And that connection is nothing but we call it as the endoplasmic reticulum. Actually, that I have done last week about epithelial endoplasmic reticulum I did. And endoplasmic reticulum, what they said, there are two types. One is smooth endoplasmic reticulum, and the other one is the rough endoplasmic reticulum. What is smooth endoplasmic reticulum? If it is not lined, if it is not covered by ribosomes, you call it as smooth endoplasmic reticulum. If that endoplasmic reticulum has got, if it has got dotted structure like this, on that, there is a dotted structure. If there is a dotted structure on that, that means there is presence of ribosomes, then you call it as rough endoplasmic reticulum. So till that you have already learned last week. Did you understand? Now let me continue with the next one. That is centrosome. Centrosome. Okay. So what is this centrosome? Yes, now look here. 
centrosome. Can you see a bundle of structures here? Broad like structure, bundle of broad like structures, which is arranged at right angles. Right angles means you know, no, at 90 degree. So you can see this bundle of structures. This is what we call it as the centrosome. So the centrosome is located in the cytoplasm. What is cytoplasm? The jelly-like substance present in the cell is called a cytoplasm. So the centrosome is located in the cytoplasm that is attached to the outside of the nucleus. That is attached to the outside of the nucleus. So here, this is nucleus. Here we we'll say the centrosome in L shape. It will be in L shape. Understood? So it is attached to the nucleus. Now, it consists of two centrioles which are oriented at right angles. I told you now, at 90 degree. They are oriented at 90 degree. Like this too. Like this. Like this. Got it? Which are oriented at? Yeah. Oriented at right angles to each other. It helps in cell division. So what is the work of this? It helps in cell division. What do you mean by cell division? Now for example children. You would have fallen. Okay. Maybe small wound has happened. Small wound has happened. Will that wound remain like that throughout your life? No. What is going to happen that wound? It will heal. When do you call it as it is healed, healed already? When again it is covered with the skin, right? New skin will be formed. So when you got wound, the skin was open, right? But that will not remain like that throughout your life. What is going to happen? It gets healed up, means it will cover. That wound will heal, it will be covered with again new skin. How that new skin is formed? Who has to form the new skin? It is the cell division. What happened? The cells around the wound starts dividing. One cell will become two, two will become four, four will become eight, eight will become sixteen. Like that, what happens? They go on dividing and like that, they cover that particular wound. So your wound will get healed up. You understand? So what is that? That is called a cell division. Okay. And now, when you have taken, taken birth, you have taken birth from yeah, mother's womb. How you are? You are so big, huh? No, you are a small child, isn't it? But now you have grown big. Who helped you that? How that growth has taken place? Again, it is because of the cell division. Did you understand? Now, during winter season, normally you see, the skin will peel out from your lips. It comes out. No dry skins will come out. Then, is it getting open your lips? Will it, will it get open? No, again it is covered. No, who is helping that? Again it is the cell division. So like that, you can see the centrosome which is present near the nucleus. What does it do? It helps in cell division. Did you understand now? You understood what is cell? Cell is the basic structure and functional unit of life. You understood? For any organism, this cell is a very much important one. If that is not there, there is no organism at all. There is no life at all. So, this cell, in the cell, you find all those things, whatever I said. Okay? So, cytoplasm is the genetic substance which is present inside the cell. So, this cell is consisting of, again, small, small units. Out of the small units only, already I have told you about the mitochondria, powerhouse of the cell, which helps in generating energy. Already I finished ribosomes, which helps in protein, protein synthesis. Now I am coming to already finished endoplasmic reticulum in the two types rough endoplasmic reticulum lined by ribosomes, smooth endoplasmic reticulum without ribosomes. Okay. Now you are learning about the centrosome. So centrosome already finished. Where is it located? It is also present in the cytoplasm, in the jelly-like substance inside the cell. And then it is attached to the outside of the nucleus. It consists of two centrioles. See bundles like, can you see? Bundles. And uh, it consists of two centrioles which are oriented at right angles at 90 degree to each other. It helps in cell division. Is it clear? Yes? Okay. Now let us go for the next one. Lysosome. I told you lysosome is never present in plant cell but it is present in animal cell. Okay, now we will see. Lysosome. Lysosomes hold enzymes that were created by the cell. So new, new new things will be produced in the cell. 
I told you that the food by what we eat also what is happening? It is nothing but chemicals. Carbohydrate. Carbohydrate means what all it consists of? It is consisting of the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. What is carbon, hydrogen, oxygen? They are nothing but chemical substances. Did you understand like that? So even the water what we are drinking, that is also chemical only. The water what we are drinking is also chemical. Why? What is water? This is H2O. The formula for water is H2O. Means what? Two atoms of hydrogen is combined with one atom of oxygen. See, hydrogen and oxygen, what are they? They are also chemicals only. Isn't it? So whatever we are taking also is chemical. Our body itself is chemical. Our body itself, all the tissues are also chemical substances only. You understood? So, lysosomes hold enzymes. Enzymes means again they are nothing but chemical substances. Okay, especially which helps in digestion. Okay, so lysosomes hold enzymes. What are enzymes? Chemical substances. Especially which helps in digestion. Okay, enzymes that were created by the cell. From here that uh, um, enzymes are created or where it is produced. It is also produced inside the cell only. See, cell is so minute, but in that so many works are going on. So many functions will be going on. Understood? So lysosomes hold enzymes that were created by the cell. The purpose of the lysosome is to digest. See here. The purpose of lysosome is to digest food, to digest food and also to destroy and also to destroy harmful substances entering into cell. Sometimes, now for example, I take coronavirus, COVID. What happens? That virus is not required for our body. Right? So what happens? It's an unwanted thing which is happening, which is going to inside of our body, which is not required. So what to do? We have to throw it away. That is why now they have found the vaccination, isn't it? So what happens once the vaccination is taken place? That vaccine will start fighting. The vaccine is also nothing but chemical substance. It fights against this virus and kills the virus. But in the same way, here what is happening? See, they can also digest. Okay, here. Okay. The purpose of the lysosome is to digest food. That you understood digestion because when we are taking it's big big particles that has to be broken up. That happens in the digestive system. When it enters into the cell, again there it is getting digested with the help of lysosome. So the purpose of the lysosome is to digest food and also to destroy harmful substances. Harmful substance means they hurt. The cell doesn't want it. But it is happening. I told you COVID virus we don't want. But it is getting into our body. So like that, it is also helping in destroying harmful substances. Entering into the cell. So whatever the good works it will digest, the bad ones it will throw out, it will just destroy it. In the cell, inside the cell itself it will kill it. It will destroy it. You understood? So that is the main work of lysosome. They can also digest their own cell organelles, leading to the death of the cell. Okay. Supposing too much of things are entering into the cell, it is not able to tolerate. What does it do? It will destroy the whole cell itself, including itself. You are getting my point? It is inside the cell. Now for example, just imagine there is lysosome present like this. There is a lysosome. Inside this cell, there is a cell. What is the work of this lysosome? To digest the food which is entering in through that. And if there is anything which is not required, what happens? It will destroy it. It will just kill it off. Okay, sometimes now more and more uh, things are entering into this unwanted things. Most of the unwanted things are entering. What happens? They can destroy your life. So, what does it do? It will not only throw it away, it will kill the whole cell itself, including itself. It is also there in the cell. Being there in the cell, what does it do? It kills the whole cell, the whole cell will be killed. You got my point? That is the meaning here. So that is about the lysosome. Because it is going to destroy the whole cell, what you call? Hence, these are called the suicide bag of the cell or suicide sacs. Why? Being inside the cell itself, what is it doing? It is not only killing itself, it is also killing the whole cell. That is why it is called as the 
suicide back of the cell or suicide sacs. Did you understand? Yes. Now, yeah, children, you understood me about these centrioles now? Okay. So, they are the bundle like structures. Can you see? Which are placed at right angles and attached to the nucleus. So, what's the main work of that? You understood. Lysosome also you understood. Now, lysosome is called as suicide bag of the cell. The reason is, if any substance which is harmful to the cell, what does it do? It kills itself as well as the cell also. That is why it is called as the suicide bag of the cell. Have you understood? So, let me stop it here. This is about the centrioles. And this is the animal cell. You can see here. So, in this animal cell, you can see this is the nucleus. Okay. The uppermost covering is called the nuclear membrane. And this jelly like substance you can see here inside that is called as the white color that is called as nucleoplasm. Nucleoplasm jelly like substance inside the nucleus. And then cytoplasm, where is cytoplasm present? It is present inside the cell membrane. Can you see this lining? That is called cell membrane. Inside the cell membrane and outside the nuclear membrane. That fluid, see this, sub, this substance. This substance that is called as cytoplasm. Got it now? So, this is the cell, animal cell. This lining is called as the cell membrane. Inside the cell membrane, there is jelly like substance called cytoplasm. Inside the, that is cytoplasm is called inside the cell membrane and outside the nuclear membrane. Understood? Because this is nucleus. This part is a nucleus. And then Inside also, inside the nucleus also there is jelly like substance that is called nucleoplasm. This is cytoplasm, this is nucleoplasm. Clear? And then you see all these things here. What are all these? This is mitochondria, powerhouse of the cell. This is centriole, which is arranged in right angles. Then this is endoplasmic reticulum. Can you see the tube like structure I told you which attaches nucleus with that of the cell membrane? And when it is dotted, can you see the dotted structure? They are liposomes, which helps in protein synthesis. If the endoplasmic reticulum is lined with liposomes, it is rough endoplasmic reticulum. If it is not lined with ribosome, it is smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Okay? And then you can see, so this is the Golgi apparatus, you can see the Golgi apparatus. So, like this, you can see, these are the certain centrioles like, there are different parts. So, these are called as the cell organelles, okay. And then, nucleus, nuclear membrane, the outermost covering is called nuclear membrane. Nucleoplasm, this is nucleolus. This is nucleolus. And you see thread-like structures here. These thread-like structures are called as chromatin network. Chromatin network. So that is about the structure of the cell. Okay, let me stop it here today. We will continue in the next class. We go through the textbook. If you have any doubt, you can clear in the next class. So let me stop it here. Thank you.